Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Uh, taking a little break today from working on my shop at home. Uh, wanted to get a little project knocked out. Uh, it's going to help me with some storage uh, over at my home shop. So, a little backstory here, I guess. So, as you guys may have seen in a previous video, I have recently purchased a 12-inch uh, LeBlanc lathe, and it came with a nice collet chuck, a 2J collet chuck and came with a really almost a complete set of collets for it, at least for rounds. Uh, didn't, doesn't have the hexes and squares and all that. Uh, but you know, this is the, the collet that it takes. It's a little bit larger collet. Uh, I think it's an inch and five eighths across the bottom here. Uh, and of course it flares out a little bit at the top. But right now I've got all these collets. I got them organized sitting on my bench in my shop and I just don't have a good place to put them or store them and I don't want to really just put them in a drawer. They're just too much trouble to dig through and find the one you're looking for. So what I've been wanting is to come up with a collet rack, kind of like this one here. This is one for uh, 5C collets. And I've been online, I've been on the internet, been on all the different sites, and I was not able to find something like this that would fit a 2J size collet. Uh, they had some other collet sizes you could get these for, but not specifically for 2J. So I'm gonna make one. So what I've got here, this is a uh, sheet of aluminum. It's uh, aluminum on the back here and it's got this uh, white protective coating on the front. And I've gone in here and, and figured out my spacing. I want these to be two and a quarter inches apart from each other, a grid. And so I, I kind of drew it out, sketched it out, just so I'd have something to work off of and have a visual guideline as I'm doing these uh, to see where my holes need to go. And these, these lines are not precision. They're just on here as, make sure I'm in the, in the ballpark of being right when I'm doing this. And I'm gonna drill these holes out, or bore them out, I guess, on my um, vertical milling machine. And do the, uh, the holes, what I'm gonna use is uh, one of these annular cutters. Uh, this is kind of like a hole saw that you may be familiar with in woodworking. Of course, I don't have a drill bit down the center, but this is something I'll chuck up in the mill, and basically it'll just bore down, cut out that disc uh, going through here, uh, for each one of these holes. So I'm gonna get this piece set up on the on the vertical mill. Uh, we'll find zero, zero on our first hole and then we'll just basically move the table over two and a quarter inches for each hole and then just go back and forth until we get them all bored out. Once that's done, uh, the side legs for this, I think I'm just gonna make those out of wood. Um, you know, I could, spend some money on some aluminum or whatever, but I, I like the looks of wood, and I think the wood and the aluminum together will look nice, and it'll just be a lot easier, and also cheaper for me to uh, fabricate those up. So that's the game plan. Let's go over here and get started. So I've got my piece set up over here on the mill machine now, and basically what I did was I just bolted this down the table. I put some little pieces of blocks of wood up underneath the, the edges here just to get it up, clamped it down so I have some clearance under it. Uh, you can't really see it in the frame, but I also got a piece of wood that I can kind of move around the middle because this is such a long span. I want to have some support when I get out here in the middle. So it's up under this and it's not really clamped down. I can move it around. It's loose enough I can move it around, uh, but it should give some, some stability. I uh, used my indicator on the back edge, got this lined up running parallel with the table. And uh, then I used my uh, edge finder to find zero, zero in this corner up here. And then using my digital readout up here, I dialed in to my first measurement uh, and basically zeroed everything out. So my zero, zero is gonna be on this first hole. And then I can just use my digital readout to go over to an eighth inch on each one of these and just dial around until I find it. And then I've got my grid on here that I can just kind of visually see if I'm where I need to be, uh, just to make sure I don't have a bozo moment here. So I've got my speed set up here and I'm gonna be playing around with these speeds and feeds. Um, right now I'm on about 125 RPMs. I'm gonna use my, uh, my feed to feed the quill down. Uh, you see the hand wheel turning here. Basically I just engage uh, everything so that that's working. And uh, flip that up and it should start going down through there. So let's see what it looks like. There it goes.
right, that is through. So I'm going to disengage that and well, there it goes. Uh, my wheel handle's messed up. That's the problem. Let me fix that. All right, guys, pulled up. My little slug came out the bottom there, uh, just like I wanted. Um, I got a little issue with my quill handle. I need to give this some attention. It's not exactly right, but it's, it'll work, and it was giving me some trouble. So I'm ready to go to my next one. I've already actually dialed over. I just dialed over on the digital readout to 2.125, uh, uh, which is 2 and an eighth inch. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do this next one. I think I am going to uh, make my speed go down a little bit quicker on this one. I thought I was going a little bit too slow on that last one. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. Clear away the swarf here. And go to the next hole. This will be Alright guys, pulled up, my little slug came out the bottom there, uh, just like I wanted. Um, I got a little issue with my quill handle, I need to give this some attention, it's not exactly right, but it's, it'll work, and it was giving me some trouble. So I'm ready to go to my next one, I've already actually dialed over, I just dialed over on the digital readout to 2.125, uh, uh, which is 2 and an eighth inch, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do this next one. I think I am going to uh, make my speed go down a little bit quicker on this one. I thought I was going a little bit too slow on that last one. Let's see what it looks like. here and go to the next hole. This will be 4.25. Right there.
Well, I've already had a bozo moment here. <laughs> it's nothing terribly major, uh, but bozo nonetheless. When I laid this out, somehow or another, I got one of my lines that I was laying off of. What I did is I found the center and then I measured over on each side and uh, started laying out my lines. And evidently, I didn't get my spacing just right on the first measurement in the center. And you can, if you look at the grid, you can see that, that this distance is smaller than the rest of them. So when I drop my cutter down, I realized, oh shoot, I'm off. Uh, but when I got out here and started measuring, the spacing is actually correct. Um, and what I'm, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to get to one side, one side or the other, and there's going to be this. This hole is going to be closer to this edge than this hole, uh, which is not a big deal because I got plenty of room on either side. Uh, so probably what I'll end up doing is I'm just going to end up having to mill one side of this down over here to make it all match up in the end. Going to have the same number of holes. I had really too much room on either end anyway. I laid this out to get the maximum number of holes. So it's going to add an extra step for me, but in the end, it's not really going to affect anything. So we're just going to continue on, and I'm just going to go off of the RO readings. Once I get past this line, none of these grids are going to be lining up, but oh well. All right, we got the first row, so uh, now what I need to do is actually come down to the second row. We'll just come down, uh, going in the other direction here, loosen my table lock up. I need to come into 2.125 on the DRO up there on the Y axis. Oops, a little too far. Probably shouldn't worry about them ten thousandths of an inch, but I'm just a stickler. Oh well, we're gonna let it go right there. And we'll pour the next hole. I've got 50 of the 80 holes drilled now, and basically I've run out of travel going back. So what I'm going to do is we're going to basically just flip this part around, um, line up on the holes uh, that were already in here, and then uh, come back and bore out these other ones in here. So I got 30 more to go. I have a total of 80 holes. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. This is white stuff. It's just a little plastic covering uh, that's over here to protect this uh, this. Uh, side of the aluminum, no big deal. Uh, it's, it's, some of it's coming off, but it's doing its job. Uh, it gives me something to write on there, no big deal. So anyway, uh, I think I'll do the setup off camera, come back and show you. It's just going to be cumbersome and the camera's going to be in the way. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, bring you back in a minute. <laughs> we turned this around and basically what I did was I lined up on the existing holes of my cutter on both sides, just running it down through there until I got it where it's lined up using my DRO again for my measurements across. And uh, basically I just zero zeroed it on this one. Um, and we're just gonna, again, using our digital readout, uh, I've got my numbers mapped on here where I need to be. And I will work our way down the rest of the, of the piece and cut these last 30 holes. So we've got all our holes drilled now. Uh, started deburring, hand deburring uh, the ones on the top here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and uh, finish deburring it and test it out with the collets and then we'll have to make some sides uh, out of some wood uh, to mount it all on. 
Let's give you guys an update of where we're at. I came in with just a little handy burring tool and deburred all these holes. And, uh, you know, they fit pretty good. Um, as we talked about before, we had that little mishap where I, I got off of my alignment on center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in down to match uh, the other side. And to do that, I need to take about a half inch off, uh, which is going to be fine. It's just extra material. I got the maximum number of holes I could have gotten in this plate. Uh, so I'm really not losing anything. It's just a aggravation because it's an added step that I wasn't planning on having to do. So I've got this all strapped down, bolted down to my uh, horizontal mill machine. I've got a big uh, shell mill up here or, or a face mill, I guess. And uh, we're just going to go through here and uh, nibble that out. Uh, I'm going to play around and see how much I can take off in a pass. Probably start with a hundred thousandths and uh, see what it sounds like and adjust it in or out from there. So I've got a pretty fast uh, speed here. I'm cutting aluminum. Uh, so that's uh, about 850 RPMs. And what I'm gonna do is I've got the dial indicator. Uh, if you guys can see that, maybe not. Anyway, I got a dial indicator right here that I can read. And I'm just gonna move the table in a hundred thousandths. We'll lock the table down and let it feed across. Well, that's going to probably be a wrap for today, guys. Um, I need to build my wood frame for this, but I'm going to probably do that in a separate video. Uh, we just got some other things need to be working on this weekend. Uh, but we did get all of our holes done. Uh, we got the plate here. Um, it's a little bit tight. Uh, my collets are fitting in, but I may see about uh, reaming these out just a little bit to make them just a little bit bigger. So. Uh, probably do all that coming up uh, in the next video on this uh, series but there we go uh, thanks for watching and I uh, will catch you guys later thanks a lot